Genius back with you once again, and today we have another in our series of Pick a Liberal's Brain program. Which I think is really amazing because uh, the irony is, if you look at the bottle over, watch turn it around so everybody gets it. What's it say? It says smart water. Yeah, I'm the smart irony. I drink water. The irony. It's the irony. There's nothing smart about this individual over here. Anyhow, but those of you who are wondering who this Yahoo is, let me explain. Yeah, uh, this is a gentleman. Did they pay you for that product placement? Yep. I gotta get your lawyer. Anyway, cool. This is a gentleman named Mark Bland, who yes. is a radio personality here in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Entertainment personality. It's debatable if what you do is actually entertaining, but nevertheless, Fair enough. Uh, he is a radio personality here in the St. Louis area, host of his own show, The Q with Mark Bland, which you can see every Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, on the iWatch Radio Network, and you can get his archive programs and all of his podcasts at his own site, TheQNow.com. Yes. So he is a liberal, he would say moderate, but nevertheless, whatever label you want to use, he is a radio personality in the area who has taken it upon himself to enter the snake pit and be the subject of our picking a liberal's brain. You're series. the apex predator. You're the no, apex. No, that's that Randy Orton guy that's oh. pretty sure it's trademarked and I don't oh. want to get sued. Nevertheless, Fair enough. Fair enough. nevertheless, the whole point of this series of programs is to get inside the mind of a liberal and, and, and kind of figure out why they think is, as they do. I know we disagree with them, I know they disagree with us, but I want to at least take it to that next level and say, dude, how can you get to the points that you're getting to? Okay. So, the topic today is the role of government in our lives. I wanted to ask you a few uh, basic questions, generally speaking, about the role of government in our lives. So, are, are you ready for the uh, Inquisition here? I am the predator of apexness in the snake pits of this show. Wow. Okay. Okay, you got to stop drinking before you come on here, but nevertheless, <laughs> go ahead. First question, what should an individual consider as a higher priority, his own well-being or the well-being of society? Uh, I think it's one of the same. Hmm. I think it's one and the same. I think that there's obviously when, when the shit hits the fan, language. Language. Yeah. Language. Yeah. Who cares? I don't like your show. He went to church this morning. It's show. cool. It's cool. Um, no, um... Father, forgive him, for he has sinned. Yes. Give me some wine and some bread. Uh... I'm Baptist. We don't do the wine thing. Go ahead. Oh, good enough. Let's see here. I think there's one in the same. I mean, when when the world comes to an end and hits the crap, hits the fan, as I explained. Um, I think that you have to put the onus on yourself. You know, I'll be really... Here's a really weird analogy for this. There's a TV show called The Walking Dead. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I have, seen it. I've heard the, of the show, but I've never seen it. Very interesting because it's it's a zombie apocalypse type show, but the the show is more about the survival of the human beings that are still human beings and not zombies. Okay. And what I find interesting about the show, and I'm not you know using this for anything more than an analogy. Nor is he being paid by them. Yeah, is the fact that on the show this has hit the fan, okay, and the world has gone upside down. There is no morals anymore. There is no true law, and the only law that technically exists is the law that these people force upon themselves on a day in and day out basis from the world that they knew. So basically, you're saying it's a bio it's a biography of Detroit. It could be. Okay. Uh, that's a slam on Detroit, and I like Detroit. Uh, evidently, all your hate mail about Detroit should be sent to uh, this guy, America's smart water genius, over at yeah. How do you like Detroit? Wow. Okay, yeah. But my point is... You enjoy root canals, No, to answer too. your question, to answer your question. Yeah. Everyone should pay attention to taking care of themselves okay. first. First. But not far behind that. And technically, probably in a very gray area crossover style of way, think of also the effects on society in general. I don't think that we need to be... Okay. There have been hundreds of years that have gone by where industry has existed. Trains with coal and shooting pollution into the air and stuff like that. Now, I know that a lot of bleeding heart liberals will argue on the, the side of green and crap like that. Yeah. Okay? I'm not going to do that. Okay? Oh, thank God. It did happen for 300 years. It, it, the effects aren't going to be that much more now. And by the time it does matter, we're going to be into our grandkids, 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 grandkids' lives. So far behind, like, I'm not worried about some guy who went trapping for snakes, you call it the snake pit, 
trapping for snakes in 1781, okay? I'm not worried about him. He might be related to me. He might be my great, 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 great grandfather, but I'm not worried about it, and he's not worried about his great, 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 great grandson in 2012. Okay, so basically you and I are not going to debate environmentalism because we're actually fairly close to the same place on that, which I'm glad to see. But to be general... No, I think we should be cognizant of the environment, and I mean, if you're just throwing... Uh, use syringes into the lake. Okay, let's let's be a little bit smarter about it than that. Okay. That's kind of ridiculous. So, so basically what you're saying is that there is an element of our society where we should be uh, cognizant of our own well-being and that of our family. Of course. Probably as well as the people around. Yeah, but but probably if, if worse comes to worse, it's our survival and that of our family that is going to be... If tomorrow over. Armageddon hit, yeah. I would take care of my wife, Go my on. son, and my daughter first. Absolutely. But within days after that, I'd probably walk down the street because I live relatively close to Travis here. I'd probably walk Lucky down the street guy. to find out if, if he's okay. Or if the people across the street are okay. And, you know, I'd be cognizant of everyone else, too. Because I realize they're dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with. And I've raised your property values by tenfold, just so I can put that out there. But No, you didn't. Okay, but as you say, you're going to then, on, on your own, yeah. you're, you're going to take it upon yourself to see about the well-being of those around you. And, of course. Uh, and I'm going to try okay. to take care of them. And if, if he needs water because his water is shot, I'm going to invite him up if I have water and say, hey... I got some water here. I know that food, shelter, and water are the most yeah. basic forms of things that you need for existence in life. I'm going to help you out. And basically what you're saying is that you would not need an outside entity to say, Mark, you need to go check on these neighbors of yours in the face of this calamity. You, I, but you they don't, just, nobody you, does you, that. Yeah, you would just... Who do, does you that? Would, you, uh, no. I think that, that, that that's where the difference between liberal and conservative is. I think that you guys think of someone saying that to you as an order. Yeah. And liberals don't look at that as an order, they just look at that as a person who's concerned going, hey, maybe you should go check on these people, excuse me. You see my, my point? If you're looking at it from the point of view of, I can take anything and turn it negative. I literally could. I could take anything. Like, you could say hi to me, I could try to find the inflection in your voice that I don't like, and go, well, he was just being a dick and saying hi to me that way. I, I don't like him. I don't like him for that. Okay. So, so you can take anything and turn it negative. So basically what you're illustrating here, and I think you're doing a rather good job of it, is that when it comes to the idea of taking care of each other, to the extent that human beings will have to do that. Of course. I mean, uh, they didn't just even, all go on their own and, and build and those even, houses and, after and Plymouth even, Rock. Even most conservatives would agree with you on that, that, they're, that people do need to take care of each other and, and have compassion on each other and have charity for each other and so forth. I think what you may have illustrated is that uh, there might be kind of a fuzzy line in your world, in the liberal world, if I can be so presumptuous to say so, oh, you're very between, between the situation where you do that on your own or someone tries to put you in a position where you are forced to do that, like with, let's say, a health care law. I've got, I got, I got like an that. example. I got okay, okay, example away. Um, back when we first hit this land, 1600s, Whatever it was. I mean, like, legitimately, like, we're coming over. And to you don't this. look a day over 300 years old. I'm talking, but no, I'm saying, I'm assuming that there were no houses built for any of the pilgrims mm -hmm. uh, or colonies built yet, obviously. Okay. There's only 30 or 40 of them that, that survived the trip in general. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming that it wasn't like the minute that they hit the ocean, they were like, well, you know, the real truth is is that uh, I think everybody should fend for themselves, survival of the fittest. So, Tom, you and your wife, you go build your own house. Brian, you and your wife, you go build your own house. Uh, Travis, you and your wife, you go build your own house. Mark, you and your wife, you go. Listen, I don't want to talk to any of you guys because I don't want to feel like I'm having to hand out to anyone, okay? No, I think what it was was they built a house. They all slept together in that house for a few for a few weeks until they could build the next house, and then or until they got a reality TV show. Sorry. No, I'm just saying, and then until they could build that house, and eventually they all worked together on each other's house, building up this community until everybody had their house. Okay, like so, I, I, they didn't take it personal, so they under, realized they needed shelter. Understanding that it was in their best interest, right, in that situation to cooperate, right, which they did. Uh, Largely on their own volition. And I think that they based a lot of their, I mean, that brings people together. Yeah, it makes yeah. them feel for okay. each other. So they, they worked with each other, they, they yeah. cooperated, because at that point in time, that was the most logical way for them to get by. Very logical. And uh, they knew that was their best bet, so they did it. Right. Did they need a federal government to come in and say, okay, Joe, I, you, you have a little bit more wheat than this guy across town, so we're going to take your wheat to give to him. 
Or could Joe have put that weed onto the, the free market and maybe sold it or whatever? And See, I think that once again, that? once again, you're, you're choosing to look at it from the, the, once again, you're always looking at it from the negative order side. Here, you have a free market. We live in a free market society. Yes, you could start a business tonight making these t-shirts right here or whatever this is. That's a mean? green screen cover. It's a green screen cover. Look at that. Which okay. you, you realize putting that in front of the camera, you're literally just covered yourself up in the background. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Okay. But, but Broadcast you, professional over here. Ladies. Okay. Green screen cover right there. You could create these and this could be your new business. Okay. Mm -hmm. No one's going to stop you from creating the website, okay. working with a manufacturer to get them mass produced, mm -hmm. and start putting it out there and letting people know that they exist and having okay. people buy them from them. No one is telling you you can't or can do that. Okay. So you have a free market economy right now. What's what's the problem? But then when I go and make these green screen right. covers that you actually couldn't see on here because we have a green screen effect in the background. Of course. Uh, when I make those things and they become wildly successful. Of course. And I make bazillions upon bazillions Quadrillion of dollars. Quadrillion dollars. Quadrillions of dollars. I think I said it in the last show. Do we really need the government to come in and say, you know, Travis, you've been awfully successful with these green screen drivers. Right. There's a guy across town here who hasn't been so successful for whatever reason. And you could answer any number of reasons okay. you want to in there. All right. We need to take a little bit more of what you've made, a higher percentage of what you've made than what this guy down the street made so that we can support him. Do we really need a government to do I, that? Do, do they do that? Absolutely. It's called a graduated tax code. They, they do that. That's a progressive tax code, yes. Really? And uh, they enforce, like, that's how they present it to people, and that's how they, they don't they, present it that way, but that's how do they present it. How do they present it? They present it as, here's Once your again, this here's is your how taxes. you hear it versus what here's it's Here's your actually. taxes, and you got to pay them. That's how they present okay, it. Okay, so what you're saying is is that be, you, you want to, you wanna, so basically your point is you want to discuss how taxes are taken out on people. That's one of When a guy like Mitt Romney explains he only spent only paid fifteen percent. Newt Gingrich explains he paid thirty percent. And these are both guys that are wildly successful and very rich. So even at that level of the game, there's a huge dichotomy between the two. So you want to try to break it down to middle class America who have basic jobs and basic companies and try to argue that point out. I don't listen. There is a code that exists across the board. Okay? okay. Now, do I agree that there should be a flat tax? Probably. I okay. like the idea I of a flat tax. I like the idea of a flat tax. Don't get me wrong, I'm a liberal, but I like the idea of a flat tax. I think it's kind of fair. But I don't think that there is, first off, most people, uh, they were talking about, uh, I know where this is going, the Barack Obama $250,000 cap limit on people's incomes and I stuff. I wasn't like that. about to mention that, but now that you brought yeah, it up. Probably, okay. Yeah, I mean, that falls into the same realm. Yeah. Okay. Most people and, combined... And the, hold yeah. on, I'm sorry. Yeah, Most people ahead. combined are not making $250,000. Let's, let's take the whole 99% versus the 1%. Oh, okay. Here we Let, go. Let's go that route for a second. <laughs> here we go. Of the 99% that are bitching about things, literally, only 10% of them actually fall into the realm of $250,000 combined or more per year that they make. Most people have a $40,000 a year job and a $50,000 a year job. $90,000 combined. Most people fall into that realm. The school teacher who makes forty, dollars and the husband who might be a mortgage broker or banker or whatever like that, who manages the local U.S. bank or whatever like that, he makes $50,000 a year. $90,000 combined. That's, that's the majority of people, middle class, okay. upper lower class, all that across so the So what's your point? My point is, is that these things don't even affect them. They don't affect them at all. And that is who you have to play to. We talked about on my show the one time, about uh, the last time you were on my show, we yeah. talked about uh, popular vote versus electoral college. Yeah. And I don't want to get into that debate, but my point is, is That's its own show. if it doesn't literally affect the majority, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to play to the majority. You cannot play to the minority. The majority is everyone. We're, we're still a country that's all in this together, okay? Everybody always wants to... And that's what I'm getting at. Go ahead. Everybody wants to bitch about, oh, you, you're not a part of the military. You didn't go into the military. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Let me tell you something. I said this on my show before. The minute Red Dawn happens and they start dropping from the sky from Russia or some other country with their machine guns, I guarantee you me, Travis, and every single American who lives on this continent will be grabbing for their guns, going out and taking care of business just like we did during the Revolutionary War. It ain't going to change. Just because you don't put on camo each day and call yourself a military personnel doesn't mean that you don't have the same mentality and doesn't mean that the United States of America isn't going to defend itself. That's stupid to think that. 
So when we go down that same exact road, the majority as a country, we all work together from that exact same mentality. We work together on everything. Okay. And when some you of us will be P. Diddy, some of us will be Brad Pitt, some of us will be Travis Cook and Mark Bland, some of us are going to own gyms, some of us are going to lay bricks for a living. You, you, it well, takes you millions. Will, you will never be P. Diddy, I'm pretty sure. But to the degree that, that, is, that, as you say, society will naturally cooperate with itself to some degree. Right. To the degree that's necessary for its own survival. Of course. Whether it's Plymouth Rock, whether it's today and Red Dawn. You talked about healthcare earlier. Listen, uh, you got a cold. Well, let, let, me, let, me ask a, let me ask a question. Sure. You've taken a lot of time. I'm sorry. I'm, try, I'm trying to get you narrowed to, well, towards the I'm trying to get what a liberal had to say. And I'm still not sure I understand it. But nevertheless, to the degree that society as a whole, the people as a whole, will naturally cooperate with each other, in order to facilitate all of their needs and even a lot of their wants, to the degree that that will happen, mm -hmm. uh, is a government necessary to enforce that or to, to help that play out, or will it just naturally occur with all of us in general? Well, the government was put together in the first place to represent the majority of people. It was? Per colony. Like Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson went down to the con Congressional Conference and then, you know, this person from the Roanoke area, and this person from the New York area, and this person from the Washington area, and this person from these colonies all came together, and they worked together, and they said, well, you know, we're thinking about the idea of this. And then Ben Franklin would say, well, the people of Philadelphia, uh, you know, I represent the majority of them. They don't, they don't like this idea. We feel that it's a little bit cumbersome. And then the people of New York are like, oh, well, we love the idea. We don't think it's too cumbersome at all. And they would discuss these things. No, that was basically what happens in Congress today. Right. It's, it's easier to get 100 people together than it is to get okay. 4,000 people together to all have this discussion. Okay. But so you have, have to have that so that they can all get on the same page. Okay. But in that group of 100 or whatever that are getting together, sure. should that group take it upon themselves to facilitate the cooperation of society as a whole, or will free market economics largely take that role instead? And see, that's where the kicker is. Back in the days of Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams and them, it literally was them just representing their area, going down yeah. and telling the people, hey, this is what we think up there. Okay. And then everybody would vote and they would come to an agreement that was generally accepted by everybody across the board. We've gotten so far away from that in general in, in, in our government. If we could get back to that way, where like, if I elect this guy, he literally does speak for the majority in this area, we'll go up and say these things on our behalf and we'll vote properly. Now, money has gotten involved, greed from our last show, that's gotten involved, people's opinions have gotten involved, and there's, you know, uh, from what I heard the other day, the President of the United States, I think just alone in his staff, okay, his assistant has an assistant who has an assistant. Yeah. And that's not see my point. Yeah, and that's not a slam it's on gotten, Obama. It's, it's, no. And that's not a slam on Obama. Believe me, you guys know I would love to slam Barack Obama. It's gotten that far though. It's but that far. he's like all the rest of the But I think I think you're kind of missing the point. Too many gatekeepers. I I understand where you're coming from. That the entire political system has a lot more layers than it needs. I right. get that. You get that. Right. Surprise. But I think that those it might layers, surprise some of you to see the. I people. think those layers affect that social thing that okay. you're talking about. Let, let me make this point. I think a lot of you out there watching the show might be surprised to see that there are a lot of people around the nation who do think that the layers of government are way too much. Here's a liberal slash moderate who believes that. Y'all know what I think of it. But what my question is in a more general sense, we, we agree that government's pretty effed up, if you'll pardon my language, of course, in yeah. terms of its structure right now. But whatever structure of government you have, should it be in the business of distributing wealth, of distributing success, of trying to make sure that certain people don't fall behind, or can the free market better take care of that? I don't think that the government does the distribution of wealth. Like, I think you look at welfare and you go, oh, well, this is distribution of wealth. They're taking from me and then they give to these people. That's, that's, that's a very easy thing to grab for and look at and say, oh, that's distribution of wealth. I don't think it is. I think that there are many layers to our society. Some people got it made. Some people are working hard every single day to make a meager paycheck. Some people can't afford, the, they're like right below that line, they're breaking off. And some people, they're just not able to physically get that. Okay. And I so think you, that you as a say, whole, 
We have to look at every situation for what it's worth. Okay, so you would say, and I'm, I'm, I hate to, to kind of... No, you're fine, you're fine. But you would say that, if I'm assuming correctly, that government does have some legitimate role to play in uh, making sure that all of those people are accounted for in some way or that, that they have, I don't want to say a shot, but that, they, uh, that their needs are taken care of in some way. Would you say that? Of, of course. Okay. I, I would say that there is a definite need for there to be a, um, not necessarily, listen, if they come to your house tomorrow and they're like, listen, uh, you already paid your taxes this year, but we need you, Travis, to bank up another $350. That's and kind of what I was saying. We Wait, need, well, no, 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 he's not. Because no one has ever taxes. come to you and asked you for $350 extra dollars after you've paid your taxes. But if they let the Bush tax cuts repeal, they're essentially doing that. But to get back to, to the main point here. To the degree that but you're haven't not, they already proven that the, the tax cuts don't work when, like, they... <laughs> you forgot the 1980s. So, to get... No, I remember the 1980s. That was credit cards came into existence. Spend, spend, spend. It's okay. Reaganomics. I get it. Spend, spend, spend. No big deal. Just do what you gotta do because you'll always be able to pay the bill later. And what ended up happening was it trashed everybody into the early I 90s. I don't remember. And, oh, you don't remember? I don't remember. I was in high school I, I when you remember, weren't. When you I, were don't remember, when you I don't remember Reaganomics having anything Hold to do with credit cards. Uh, we're going off, off the, the topic here. We only have a limited amount of time. To the degree that you and I both agree. You cut me off. It's my you, show. You didn't, well, but you cut me off. You didn't allow me to speak the rest of my mind. You didn't answer my question. So therefore, it just doesn't exist. That's the problem with being a conservative. <laughs> no, no, that right there is the problem with being a conservative. It's really funny to him and he laughs it off and stuff like that, but as soon as the camera goes off, he's going to be like, dude, that was really entertaining. I'll be like, it doesn't matter if it was entertaining. It doesn't matter if it is entertaining. Because the point is, is that we're trying to like talk about these things and get them out there. I want to hear your opinion just as much as you want to hear mine. See my point? Okay. Reaganomics is, uh, 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 was affected heavily and was a part of credit cards coming into existence. And when credit cards came into existence, they were like, spend now, you can pay later, but nobody ever paid later. And they kept not paying later, not paying later, until they literally dropped the entire market. And then when George Bush Sr. took office in okay, what, what you're talking about. He had a recession to do What with. you are talking about, and I don't want to go deeply into this topic. Sure, of course. It's another show. Okay. We could do an hour on that topic. But what you're talking about is a, a loosely Keynesian economics. Very loosely, but it has its, it has its basis in that. Which right. is the idea that spending, spending, spending is, is the big thing, and that just driving that uh, money through the economy from one hand to the other to another to another is what keeps the economy going and flowing. And that was largely the uh, economic system, the economic philosophy that a lot of politicians had for most of the 20th century, Republicans and Democrats alike. One of the big... One of the big things that I dislike about Richard Nixon okay. was the fact that he actually said we're all Keynesians now. I think right now Keynesian economics has been proven to be a crock of something or other. Now, Reaganomics broke from that a little bit in terms that it was more of a trickle-down sort of economics. It wasn't about government needs to spend money just to keep the pump It going. was the idea that if you were an owner of a business, you were helping the lower man have jobs, therefore yeah. you were supporting his family, and then whatever he spent was helping the supermarket or the gas station yes. or whatever. But it yes. was, but it wasn't but about... But that's just general but, economics. But See, they, they try about, to call but, it Reaganomics. But it was not about spending money for the sake of spending money, which is what Keynes... Oh, no, no, the 80s? And spend, that's spend, spend, spend. Some people in the Green movie. is good. They put Green it into a movie. They put it into a movie. Spend, 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 green is good. They put it into a physical movie as a quote that became famous specifically we, for the fact that that is exactly what represented we that entire We didn't put that into a movie. The liberals put that into a movie. But nevertheless, we're going way off topic here. Okay. But the, point, the point of that was that Reaganomics at least broke from the idea that government needs to be the primary spender of money to keep the economy going. And that's where Keynesian economics was. A, I think I figured out exactly a, about our little, like, the last time I was here that we did the thing, and now this time. Yeah. I think that, like, each time it'll be another topic that we're going to talk about will. the entire I'm, show. I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> I'm trying to be a professional host here. Okay. Right. Last question, back to our original uh, question of the role of government. Last question we have. When it comes to governmental involvement in our lives, right. and whatever matter, mm -hmm. what should be the primary influence and the amount of government that is necessary to pursue whatever we needed to pursue. Should it be more of a local influence, or should it be more of a national influence? I think that the government, in my honest opinion, 
there should be a, like, if I could break it down on a 100% scale, mm -hmm. I think there should be, like, 10 to 20% national influence. I think there should be, like, 80, 70 or 80%, yeah. like, maybe 20, 30 for the national, and, like, 70 to 80 percent for the local influence depending on the yeah. area so like I, I, every area is different and I, I might tweak those numbers a little bit I might take it closer to that 10 or 15 for the national right maybe I, I 85 mean, for the local I but, think like but you and I are actually not far off on that. no I, I think that um, you know each local area kind of knows what's going on in its own Absolutely. location a little better than the national side now now there's certain things like how old do you have to be to drive and get a driver's license? That's fine. That's a national thing because there's tons of kids and, you know, everyone's different across the entire, or what is the legal age of consent and things like that. That's all, that should be a national thing because those general numbers will never change. 17-year-old is a 17-year-old and you're smarter at 25 than you were at 17. It's understandably across the board. Some people don't grow out of that 17-year-old basis, but I'm saying a 25-year-old is usually smarter than a 17-year-old. So, okay, so we there's can, a generalization. We, yeah, we, I would say can, local. We could talk about individual laws right. and so forth yeah. and debate that. But, but that's my point. But the my bottom point. line is, by and large, the local influence should carry the day more so than the national influence of should, course it should on a political level. Unless we're talking about things of magnanimous proportions. I mean... And, and, but see, then the question is, is where does the breakdown come? Is it just St. Louis and its outlying counties handle themselves? Or is it Hazelwood and Florissant each independently own those sections and then St. Louis over, like, every, it, there's a really interesting dichotomy. It's a, a very interesting discussion. I think it's a discussion we as a nation are having right now, and that's really a lot of the crux of this liberal versus conservative debate. I'm, I'm glad to see that at least someone on your side uh, agrees to an extent with me that uh, the more local influence should be the higher priority. Now, but and don't then, let that get to your head. Ah, oh, shoot. I knew there was a but. No, no, no. There's no. Don't let it get to your head. That's the biggest problem. You see, certain people attain certain levels in life because they've shown the responsibility and the characteristics to handle those situations. You might get a hot head. Conservatives call those people wealthy. You right? might get, you might get, no, no, you, because there's a lot of crazy wealthy people out there. Joe Francis owns girls going, wow, the dude's nuts. Okay, so... My point is, is that you, you, or Max Hardcore has made a lot of money in the porn industry, but this dude rapes people for a living, pretty much. Although... You seem to know an awful lot about Max Hardcore. Well, no, I'm just, I've seen some recent... Right, that was the one name I did not think would come up on this show. <laughs> I've recently seen some documentaries about... Oh, they're guy. documentaries, okay. Well, yeah, there was a documentary in the UK <laughs> called Hardcore that came out, and I happened to peruse it and find it, and I, it's not a porno thing that you're I'm perusing. Do, you're perusing documentaries. It doesn't make me look like good, but, but you got to understand being an entertainer and being in the in industry of entertaining people as well as talking about social and current issues sometimes things come across my desk and I peruse them and that's <laughs> why I bet you do I bet you do <laughs> with that we're gonna allow Mark Bland to uh, go off camera here and uh, <clears throat> peruse some documentaries and we'll be back, be back in just a moment The well-being of ourselves and our individual families will always, and should always, be the highest priority to each of us. In a truly free society, we should not be expected to subjugate our own individual well-being for the supposed well-being of society. Therefore, a government that attempts to do this is inherently unjust. While we all likely have some desire to help or to serve others, particularly those less fortunate than ourselves, our government should allow us the freedom to determine how best to pursue that desire and to what extent. Indeed, history will show you, if you want to go all the way back to Plymouth Rock, which we talked about earlier, that human beings, when left to their own devices, will cooperate where necessary and when necessary. They don't need a federal government to come in and force them to do it. Our government should not be so arrogant that it assumes it can best determine how our individual resources can be used to help others, and furthermore, to confiscate those resources from us. Or, a government should not be so arrogant that it can think that it can determine what we should eat, what we should drive, what kind of home we should live in, what kind of light bulbs we should use, or any countless number of other things. While one certainly should not place their trust entirely in the private sector, after all, people in the private sector are most likely acting in their own self-interest. One certainly should not place their trust in government either in terms of those same, those same things that they need to have done. After all, 
politicians are humans just like the rest of us are, just like every, everybody in the private sector is. Meaning that, much like a businessman, or much like you, or much like I, a politician will most likely only be motivated by their own self-preservation and their own self-interest above all else. Just like all of the rest of us. To create a government in which we assign anything other than the smallest possible level of trust and responsibility is effectively to slit our own throats because we are overturning our power to those who will only use it in their own self-interest, just like any of us would. The proper role of government should be as limited as possible. And the more government you allow into your life, the more of a slave to others you end up becoming. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.